December 26th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Zechariah chapter 7 and 8 from the Old Testament. In King Darius, fourth year, on the fourth day of Kislev, the ninth month, the word of the Lord came to Zechariah. Now the people of Bethel had sent Sherezer and Regam Melech and their companions to seek the Lord's favor. By asking both the priest of the temple of the Lord, who rules over all in the prophets, should we weep in the fifth month, fasting as we have done over the years? The word of the Lord, who rules over all, then came to me. Speak to all the people and priests of the land as follows. When you fasted and lamented in the fifth and seventh months through all these seventy years, did you truly fast for me, for me indeed? And now when you eat and drink, are you not doing so for yourselves? Should you have not obeyed the words that the Lord cried out through the former prophets when Jerusalem was peacefully inhabited and her surrounding cities, the Negev and Shephelah, were also populated? Again, the word of the Lord came to Zechariah. The Lord who rules over all said, Exercise true judgment and show brotherhood and compassion to each other. You must not oppress the widow, the orphan, the foreigner, or the poor, nor should anyone secretly plot evil against his fellow human being. But they refused to pay attention, turning away stubbornly and stopping their ears so they could not hear. Indeed, they made their heart as hard as diamond so that they could not obey the Torah and the other words the Lord, who rules over all, had sent by his Spirit through the former prophets. Therefore the Lord, who rules over all, had poured out great wrath. It then came about that just as I cried out, but they would not obey, so they will cry out, but I will not listen. The Lord, Lord, who rules over all, had said, Rather I will sweep them away in a storm into all the nations they are not familiar with. Thus the land had become desolate because of them with no one crossing through or returning, for they had made the fruitful land a waste. Then the word of the Lord who rules over all came to me as follows. The Lord who rules over all says, I am very much concerned for Zion. Indeed, I am so concerned for her that my rage will fall on those who hurt her. The Lord says, I have returned to Zion and will live within Jerusalem. Now Jerusalem will be called Truthful City, Mountain of the Lord, who rules over all, holy mountain. Moreover, the Lord who rules over all says old men and women will once more live in the plazas of Jerusalem, each one leaning on a cane because of advanced age, and the streets of the city will be full of boys and girls playing. And, says the Lord who rules over all, though such a thing may seem to be difficult in the opinion of the small community of those days, Will it also appear difficult to me? Ask the Lord who rules over all. The Lord who rules over all asserts, I am about to save my people from the lands of the east and the west, and I will bring them to settle within Jerusalem. They will be my people, and I will be their God in truth and righteousness. The Lord who rules over all also says, Gather strength. You who are listening to these words today from the mouths of the prophets, who were there at the founding of the house of the Lord, who rules over all, so that the temple might be built. Before that time there was no compensation for man or animal, nor was there any relief from adversity for those who came and went, because I had pitted everybody, each one, against everyone else. But I will be different now to this remnant of my people, from the way I was in those days, says the Lord, who rules over all. For these will be a peaceful time of sowing. The vine will produce its fruit, and the ground its yield, and the skies will rain down dew. Then I will allow the remnant of my people to possess all these things. And it will come about just as you, both Judah and Israel, were a curse to the nations, so I will save you, and you will be a blessing. Do not be afraid. Instead, be strong. For the Lord who rules over all says, As I had planned to hurt you when your fathers made me angry, says the Lord who rules over all, and I was not sorry. So to the contrary, I have planned in these days to do good to Jerusalem and Judah. 
Do not fear. These are the things you must do. Speak the truth, each of you, to one another. Practice true and righteous judgment in your courts. Do not plan evil in your hearts against one another. Do not favor a false oath. These are all things that I hate, says the Lord. The word of the Lord, who rules over all, came to me as follows. The Lord, who rules over all, says the fast of the fourth, fifth, seventh, and tenth months will become joyful and happy, pleasant feasts for the house of Judah. So love, truth, and peace. The Lord, who rules over all, says it will someday come to pass that people Residents of many cities will come. The inhabitants of one will go to another and say, Let's go up at once to ask the favor of the Lord, to seek the Lord who rules over all. Indeed, I'll go with you. Many peoples and powerful nations will come to Jerusalem to seek the Lord who rules over all and to ask his favor. The Lord who rules over all says, In those days, ten people from all languages and nations will grasp hold of Indeed, grab the robe of one Jew and say, Let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. God, I'm having a really hard time with the Christmas season this year. And oddly, I realize that this video is coming after Christmas. But when you're talking about are you really doing these rituals, these celebrations for me? Or are they all about you? That just has been on my heart a lot this Christmas season, more so than any other time. That we go through all these actions, but we don't stop and think about them. They're not intentional. We put up Christmas trees, we decorate, we put up stockings, um, we throw parties, office parties, uh, different types of Christmas parties. Uh, we go to candlelight service. We have Christmas dinner. And men, many of these, just like in this chapter in Zechariah, many of these are just uh, rituals, uh, habits, memories, uh, traditions. I don't mean to say it in a bad way, but just like you told them, are you doing this for you or are you doing this for me? Christmas for a Christian is supposed to be all about the birth of your son, the birth of our Redeemer, our Savior, the person who is now going to intercede on our behalf so that we no longer have to go to the temple uh, that they're referring to in here. And so I really struggle a lot with Christmas in the way it is. And I'm not even talking about all the like crazy shopping messages type of thing. I'm just talking about Christians going through rituals and having them have nothing to do with you. Now I realize most of those rituals are pagan based. I mean, for Pete's sakes, Christmas is horrendously <laughs> pagan based. Uh, and we have taken over <laughs> the Christmas part and uh, decided to attach your son's birth to that time, even though your son was probably born around springtime, more like Easter. Uh, but that is truly what we are to be celebrating, studying, being in devotion over, being in prayer over. And yet we do all these other things. And I'm not saying that, that they're bad things. It's just this year they're just <laughs> really bothering me in that sense of, am I doing this for me? Am I doing this for you, God? And you ask multiple times through the Bible, Sometimes you command to do all things for you, to glorify you in all things. That if we eat and drink, it's totally fine as long as it's glorifying you in some way. And the same thing should be true about Christmas time. And I know many families who everything they do is very intentional and all about you. Uh, everything that is a ritual, uh, everything that is a process, everything that's a tradition, they they bring it back into it being about you and a teaching moment for their children. But I think for a lot of us, it's not. It's not intentional. And in fact, this season's so busy that we barely have time to think. So it probably becomes even less intentional. 
In reading over this part of Zechariah, one of the commentaries that I was studying for Zechariah said, this process, this building of the, the temple, of doing these rituals for the right reasons, and when everything aligned up, then that incredible blessing started to happen. In fact, in, in verse 12, we actually hear you refer to it as a sowing of peace. Uh, from an agricultural standpoint, sowing a peace after the temple was done. And all of these things were done for true repentance. They didn't have what we have now, which is your son, his death on the cross for us, the forgiveness of our sins through that death. But they could receive repentance through their righteousness, righteousness in doing certain things like that. And this a book I was reading said the true test of repentance is a life of obedience to God. Not Sundays, not when we remember, not on Easter and Christmas Eve, but a life of obedience. That is when true repentance happens. So again, you and I have had this conversation quite a bit about Christmas and and how to truly make it about you and how to make it very intentional. And there's no tree up in my house this year and there's no stockings hung. And uh, it's been, been very quiet on the Christmas front in my house. I, I've tried to make it more about you. I've tried to, instead of giving gifts, I've spent time with people. I've written handwritten letters, of notes of appreciation to people. and. You and I both know how much I hate writing, so that unto itself is a huge gift. I've tried to make it about other people. I've tried to make it about you, God. And it's felt very different this year. And so I know you and I are going to continue to have conversations about this, but even once we get outside of Christmas, we really need to examine our life. And are, are we handpicking moments that are yours, God? Or is our whole life turned over to you doesn't mean that we don't make mistakes gosh I make mistakes all the time but are we truly repentant of the things that we do wrong and it shows in our life that we continue to go back and we seek you and, and we try and glorify you in all the things we do are we truly being intentional about that passion that we have for you and our faith and our incredible thankfulness over the blessings that you've given us that we so don't deserve, especially the forgiveness of our sins. Our temple on this side of the New Testament, that incredible Redeemer, that pure Lamb that was sacrificed for our sins. Are we truly repentant through a life of obedience lived for you? God, unveil this truth to us. Like I said, I know you and I will be talking about this more because I'm really struggling with the world versus you right now. But allow us to have discernment and understanding. We don't get to pick and choose what goes to you and then the rest is lived for us. That's not what you call us to do. You call us to be all in. Even when it's uncomfortable, <laughs> you call us to be all in. Even when it's difficult, even when it's hard, you call us to be all in. God, unveil that to each and every single person listening to this video today. What does it take for them to be all in? What does that look like in their lives? What are they holding on to that they're not ready to give up yet? And help them turn those things over to you so that they can live we live the life that you want them to, that you created them to live. God, I want my life to glorify you. That's what I want more than anything in the world. I want my actions and my words and my deeds to be all about you. I want nothing else. Please help me make that happen in my life. It's only with you that I can do that. I pray all this in your son's name. Amen.